What is going on guys? Welcome back to the Codify Casual channel and today as you guys have been waiting for a whole week, I'm sorry but I've been really busy again, but today I finally got the time to do this deck review. So as you can see here, this is the Gear Chronicle deck from the newest set, uh, EBO4 The Answer of Truth, which I unboxed as you can see over here. Click right there at the card in the top right hand corner to go and see my unboxing of that. Um, but for now, we're just going to go through the entire deck list and this one is actually one of the most difficult decks to build. Because there are 4 grades to play around with, 5 uh, if you count grade 0, there are just so many ways to build this deck and uh, deck build has such an important uh, role to play in this deck because you don't want to break and not get your grade 3 or not get your grade 2 or not get your grade 1 and most importantly, you do not want to miss getting those grade 4s. I know you guys may be thinking, if you guys know Lost Legends skill, that's the grade 3, uh, his skill is actually kind of a stride. You might be wondering why do you even need to draw those grade fours. The truth is, in this deck, there's a reason why grade fours have to be included, and I believe Bushiro planned it this way. And uh, for those of you guys who don't know, um, for Gear Chronicle in this new set, the grade fours are inside your actual deck, and the total sum of grades bound in your bind zone. Um, through card effects is what gives you different effects on your grade 4s. So you do strike the grade 4 for a turn, but if you do want to, you can ride up to grade 4, and the effects are only on place, so you have to rewrite every turn if you do go to grade 4. But as you can see here from the first card, which I will go through, we have Mystery Flare Dragon. So as you can see here, uh, well, you can't really read Japanese, but it says that for each grade, um, each sum of grades, you may activate this, and it'll, it'll be in order, and you have to activate each of these abilities. Um, uh, with the exception of the last one because it has an additional cost. So, as you can see here, for the first one, so long as you have three or more grades of bound cards in your bind zone, you get plus one drive. And that's really the most important thing. Uh, you're really going to be wanting to get that three, uh, three cards, three grades rather, in your bind zone to use the triple drive right off the start, which will give you a card advantage and a pressure advantage right from the get-go. Uh, and of course, when you stride every turn, you do get an additional force marker from rewriting Lost Legend uh, at the end of every uh, match, or at the end of every turn, I should say. Um, right here you see it. the next one is at 7 grades, you get 1 extra critical. At 13 grades, you get a soul saver effect for your whole field, 6 units getting plus 10,000 power. And for the last one, of course, the most powerful effect is uh, 19 cards, uh, 19 grades in the bind zone. Uh, you can discard your hand at the end of the turn and you take an extra turn. In the next turn, you can't ride. That's both normal and the superior riding of Lost Legend. So you're going to be uh, on Lost Legend on that last ride. But just going to start going through the deck right here. Uh, we'll start with the grade 4s of course, at first. So, starting with the Great Force, I play 4 Mystery Flare Dragon, you guys know the skill already. Truth is, you don't always need to get to the extra turn skill, and uh, if you too, try too hard to get to the extra turn, you might actually end up um, wasting your resources and being worse off than if you just try to go for uh, that maximum uh, 13, uh, 13 cards in the bind zone, which will give you the Soul Saver, which is usually enough to finish off your opponent. So 4 copies of him because he's extremely, extremely necessary, and uh, I wouldn't recommend running any fewer copies of him. And here is, of course, the next grade 4. This is uh, interdimensional, interdimensional Dragon, Idealized Dragon. So here is another card worth of debate. Some people play more, um, and it's worth playing more because more grade 4s means you can get, uh, you can more easily get higher number of grades, total sum of grades in your bind zone, and that's going to be really important. Uh, for me, I play only 2. I messed around with 7, uh, seven grade 4s, which is 3 Idealized Dragon, but uh, it got a bit too clunky uh, in my hand, and I had to change some of it out. But let's go over Idealized Dragon skills. Uh, same when he is ridden, or when he is uh, superior ridden, uh, either one, you can, if you have one grade in your bind zone, uh, check the uh, return one of your opponent's uh, rear guards to the bottom of their deck. So this is actually a really annoying effect uh, for both you and your opponent. Uh, you, because you don't get to choose which one you, your opponent gets to send back to the deck. Unfortunately, it's like a Shadow Paladin effect, they get to choose, which means if they do have uh, something that they want to get back in the deck to use uh, recall ability, uh, it's going to be really painful for you. But against decks that do not have any of those kinds of abilities, it's essentially, it's essentially a retire, uh, which is really good for that. Uh, the next one is at 5 grades, you can call, and you must call rather, once you hit any of these uh, bound effects, uh, bound sums, you have to use the effects, so no choice there. Call the top card of your deck to any open rear guard circle, or just any rear guard circle. Uh, and the last one is at 11 grades, you can call 2, or you have to call 2 uh, grades, uh, 2 units from the drop zone and call them to rear guards and for that turn 3 of your rear guards get plus 5,000 power. So uh, again, you only want to run 2 because most of the time uh, you won't use him unless you're at that really strange mark like 5 or 11 uh, and you don't think it's worth it to uh, push the opponent for more damage or you want to fill up your field or reduce the size of your opponent's field, that's the only time you want to use Idealized Dragon. 
And next up, we have the Grade 3. So Grade 3s in this deck is really simple. You don't want to be riding to anything other than Lost Legend. So here's four copies of the Grade 3, the only Grade 3 in the deck, uh, Inter Interdimensional Dragon Knight, Lost Legend. So here he is. Um, and his skill is once a turn. Well, not once a turn, but his active ability is that you can discard a card with or discard a number of any number of cards with the total sum of grades being Grade 3 or higher. Search your deck for one Grade 4 and then ride it in stand position at the end of the turn, retire that unit, and you can call, uh, you can ride a grade 3 from soul in the rest position. And because Lost Legend does have the force marker, that means you're getting two force markers a turn, I'll be one at the start of the turn and one at the end of the turn, and for every following turn, if you do not ride another Lost Legend, you only get that one extra force marker. So, um, you know, weigh the benefits of keeping your Lost Legends, uh, using it as stride fodder, and rewriting the Lost Legends because it does give you an advantage in terms of Force Markers. And uh, Force Markers is actually one of the most important cards in this deck. I know it's the extra zone, but having lots of Force Markers is going to be really necessary because you're going to be riding and striding a lot. The second effect is when you ride on top of Lost Legend, that can be done at any point of time, which means if you have Lost Legend on Vanguard and you decide to ride over it, that works. Card Blast 2 draw 1 card, that's the effect. Or if you ride over with one of your Great Force, either this or Mystery Flare Dragon, you do get to use the skill if you want to come blast through to draw one card. Really essential for building up extra resources and really filtering through the deck. Uh, next up, and you guys probably saw that at the side, we have the Great Twos. So the Great Twos I run are kind of a interesting mix. So I always like having a little bit of everything. And here we have Lost Break Dragon, one of the most important cards in the deck. His skill is that when you call him or ride him, you can choose to if you do put a card from the bind zone into, uh, from your hand into the bind zone, you can draw one card. This is extremely essential for getting those great force, which I mentioned at the start, that are in your hand and you don't think you're going to use them. It's really important to get at least one great four or one great three into the bind zone so that you can use Mystery Flash Dragons, uh, Mystery Flash Dragons, uh, plus triple drive skill right off the bat. That's going to be really important for the rest of the game. So you definitely want to be able to ride him or call him on turn two, which is why you play four copies. And the second skill is that on Rearguard, he gets plus 3,000 power if there's a single face-up card in your bind zone, which is another really important thing to have, because at this rate, you're really going to want to uh, get those 13k swingers, uh, because that means you can put just a bunch of force markers and then just put him there. He hits uh, 23, 33, 43, however many force markers you have, uh, with no boost. And in this deck, uh, most of the grade 1 cards have uh, different purposes, so you don't always want to use them uh, on the field or right away. So that's for Lost Break Dragon. Next, I play two of this Steam Hunter Lipid. So her skill is really good. When you call her, you can call a, um, you can put one of your cards from the drop zone into the bind zone. This is actually one of the most important cards because you can put the uh, stro your cards that you stro strode, strode, wrote, uh, superior road, the great force that you are not going to use anymore, which means, let's say you don't want to use Idealized Dragon, you know you're going to be on Mystery Flare for the rest of the game, you're going to use her and put one of those cards into your bind zone, helping you to fuel, um, the bind zone and get to a higher grade. And because Lost Legend skill doesn't have to be uh, put into effect immediately, it's an active skill, she's going to be good for those last minute clutch, um, putting those grade force from the drop zone into the bind zone so that you can use uh, the grade force full effects. And it's important here to note that you only get those effects on ride, which means that after you ride, if you get more cards into the bind zone, that doesn't change anything. It only works when you ride, um, either at the start of the turn normally, or when you superior ride with Lost Legend skill. Um, and you don't get a second chance to um, reactivate those effects until the next turn. Next we play 4 copies of the Steam Rider Nabu and her skill is very similar. She also, on uh, on attack, uh, she can also bind something from the drop and for that turn she gets uh, the effect where your opponent cannot guard with any card higher than grade 1 which means you can't guard with normal units and you can only guard with grade zeros. A really important card for pressing your opponent. And um, yeah, and also good for filling up the soul, which will come into play later. When she attacks, you do the binding. After the battle ends, you send her the soul and draw a card. Really good for refueling your hand after um, swinging with a really powerful attack with a guard history. And next up, we have the last and probably one of the more controversial options that I've put in my deck. The lost uh, the Gun Bezel Dragon. So a lot of people have, I play three copies of him, and a lot of people don't actually play Gun Bezel Dragon, but I think his pressure is incredibly important. Uh, because one of the things you're going to face in this deck is that you're going to get PG'd a lot. Uh, so they'll obviously know that because you're playing against uh, Gear Chronicle and your Vanguard can be PG, there's no restriction, and there's a triple drive and double crit once you get to seven cards in the bind zone, they're going to want to PG your Vanguard. Unfortunately, that means you're not going to get a lot of damage out if they do have a lot of PGs in hand, especially for Protect Lands. And that's why you play three Gun Bezel Dragon. So Gun Bezel Dragon's skill is that when he attacks, you can counter blast one, and for each grade of your Vanguard, he gets plus 5,000 power during that battle, and at the end of the battle, he gets sent to the bind zone. So first of all, you do get the additional two grades in the bind zone, 
pretty useful if you're going to swing on an early turn and set up for a big mystery flare turn uh, in the following times to come. But more importantly, the most important thing is that that 20,000 power brings this up to a 29,000 power if you do have a 8k boost behind that to a 37,000 power on its own and putting force markers on that column is just going to make it bigger. And um, in the deck where force markers are really common, this really big column is going to swing really hard and uh, if you just put one crit trigger on this thing, it's going to be a real, real uh, big threat. And maybe the opponent will have to drop a few PGs uh, or have to take that damage. So if you, even if you don't uh, get to hit with your Vanguard, uh, your Mystery Flare Vanguard, those triple drive crits will not go to waste and you can put them on something that's actually threatening. Um, unfortunately, with Nabu, she doesn't get any power. If not, her guard restrict skill would be really, really good. And that's all the grade twos that I run. So moving on to the grade one. So the grade ones are another big debate. A lot of people, of course, will run the standard, and I do too. We play four stride fodder, and his skill is that when he's discarded from hand, he gets plus two grades, or he's discarded as a grade three, I should say. Um, and that means that you can use him to stride as a stride cost. For those people who've been playing G, um, that's what stride fodder means. You're just using it as a fodder for your striding abilities. And his Vanguard skill is only uh, when he's ridden. Um, you can, when his attack hits, bind one card from your drop, to, uh, one card from your hand to the bind zone, and then draw one card. Really good for getting those early binds out, and also to uh, make sure that your hand is actually good for the rest of the game. And probably the most important card, uh, the most important grade one for sure in this deck is this. It's called Brisk Worker, or Promptly Worker, whichever you want to take. But his skill is that from hand, when you call him, um, you can send one of your cards from the drop zone back to the bottom of the deck. If it's a grade three or higher, you can Soul Blast through and draw one card. Again, a really, really important card because you're only going to have so many great force in your deck. Any more than maybe seven at tops. Your hand is going to be really crowded with great force, so you really don't want to run more than seven. Um, unless, of course, someone has a, another strategy that they want to use. But as of now, 7 is the recommended number, and that means you're going to have to use her skill to send some Great Force back into the deck so that you can superior ride them with the Lost Legend skill another time. Uh, and of course, if you are out of Great Force, or you have all the stuff that you need, and you have a bunch of Great Force in the deck, but you do want to call her, you can always send a trigger back. Heal triggers and um, critical triggers mostly, um, because you do, want, you do not want to deck out too fast. And that Soul Blast 2, of course, again, for filtering through the hand and the deck. Next, I play two of this. Uh, this is the Steamworker Talon. So uh, his skill is that when he boosts, you can Soul Blast 1. And for that turn, your opponent can only guard with three cards from hand. That's right, three cards, which means if there's not a PG in the opponent's hand, um, and you swing with a big enough column, they will eventually lose. The biggest guard with, uh, without perfect guard is, of course, 60k. So if you're swinging like 45k uh, or 40 3k I guess with an 8k boost behind your mystery flare dragon there's a pretty good chance that they'll have to drop a lot of cards just to defend against that and if they don't have uh, any good cards then they'll have to drop more than 3 because of course the 60k, 60k shield is just the perfect scenario with 3 heal triggers and they're not always going to have that and at the end of the turn he, at the end of the battle he just gets sent to the bind zone which is actually one extra creep which makes all the difference because of the odd numbers of the bind of the bind zone requirements with uh, 3, 5, 7 um, 11, 13, and 19. Uh, oftentimes you're going to end up with 16, 18, uh, 12, uh, all these weird numbers. They just need one grade more, and this is going to be really, really useful. And that is uh, why I run two copies of him. Last of all, I run this, the Steam Hunter Minime, and her skill is really, really important. I would run more than uh, one copy of her, but she does uh, become a dead card if you draw her too late in the game. So her skill is that whenever you ride on the Vanguard, or rather when your Vanguard uh, enters the Vanguard Circle, that's what the actual translation says, you can draw a card and discard a card. If that card was a grade 3 or higher, you can give 3 of your units plus 5,000 power. Now the most important uh, use of this card is actually filtering through your deck. So oftentimes you're going to end a turn or start a turn without the grade 3 you need to strike, or you're going to end the turn um, or start the turn um, with a hand that's less than ideal for attacking. So what you're going to do is when you use her skill, or when your Vanguard rides with Lost Legend skill or just a normal ride, you can filter through the deck. And this is actually really important because um, because you only run three, uh, four copies of the Grade 3 Lost Legend, you really want to get the Lost Legend and not have to G-Assist, but G-Assisting is definitely better than if you run another Grade 3 because if you are stuck on this card, Gun Vessel Dragon, well, your game plans are pretty much derailed for the rest of the game. And so that's why she's incredibly important. Even though I only run her one copy of her, I tried running two copies and you do draw her uh, more often when you do run two copies, of course. But unfortunately, that means that you're going to deck out faster. And in this deck, you do have a great chance of decking out because of the trigger lineup. So we have two regular draw triggers, four draw PGs, pretty standard, and six crits and four heals. 
So a very standard deck lineup. And the reason why I do say that this is probably one of the best is because you do want to get as many draws as possible to filter through the deck, not just to get more cards in hand, but to get the right cards in hand. And that's why, um, and because of this deck, and because this deck uses uh, a lot of discarding and binding from the drop zone, you don't have to be worried about uh, discarding something important because you can just use her to uh, call from the drop zone, or bind from the drop zone I should say, and her to again bind from the drop zone. And if all else fails and you have to use Idealized Dragon, you can use his skill to call a couple of units back from the drop zone, uh, giving you a field when you might be worried you don't have one. And uh, yeah, so that's pretty much the deck. I did quite a bit of testing and in my opinion, this is the best. Of course, there are Japan, Japanese of course, there are Japanese um, sets and lists that run Gun Vessel Dragon, and his skill is a pretty interesting skill. Uh, when he attacks, you can counter blast one and bind one of the units from your drop zone, uh, from your rear guard, sorry, uh, to the bind zone, and your opponent has to return a card of a lower grade to the bottom of the deck. So it's some sort of removal, and you do get to draw one right after, but unfortunately, it's just not good enough, and uh, getting to G assist, G assisting into this card is basically the end of the game for you, uh, because you'll be two cards down and you can't stride for the rest of the game until you draw the Lost Legend, which is four cards out of 50 or 49 if you don't count the starter. Anyways, yeah, that was the deck review. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, like and share this video if you enjoyed it, and check out the next few videos, which are most likely, hopefully, going to be fights. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed. If you like what you see here and you want to see more, click that like button and subscribe. Click that bell notification icon to stay updated with all of my uploads. And until next time, have fun, and remember, it's okay to play casual.